Today we're in Yadkin County. We're at a uh, demonstration that Tim Hambrick, the county extension agent up here, put in. Uh, these are E3 soybeans in a field that was heavily infested uh, with Palmer amaranth last year. And to give you an example, I will point down here at the end of the plot where little to anything was sprayed and you can see the tremendous amount of Palmer amaranth here. But again, this is an E3 soybean trial and I'm gonna turn it over to Tim and he's gonna walk you through what all he's done and why. Okay. Um, there's two or three things I wanted to see when I put out this demonstration. One is Alan gave me some E3 soybeans and some chemical to put on here, some Liberty and, and the 2,4-D product as well. So I wanted to see how those worked. And I have to say right off the bat, I've been pretty impressed with them. The other thing I was looking at was different modes of action, uh, multiple modes of action. And, you know, in this demonstration right now, we're looking down the rows where a single mode of action pre-emerge was applied. And, you know, out in the distance, you can see more you can see more weediness, you can see more palmer. As I move, you can see it in here. This is still a great deal better than what it looked like last year at this same time. So it's, uh, it's successful, even though we probably could have put a second dose on there along the way. As I move over, you know, when I get out in here, we've got a, another two modes of action uh, as a pre-emerge. Looks pretty good. and. We, we put the, um, the 2,4-D choline and the Liberty on when the Palmer was about four inches high. It cleaned the field up perfectly. It probably would have been in our best interest had we come back a second time and done that again. Uh, and, and probably if this was my grower's standard practice, he probably would have. But, uh, you know, I've got about three quarters of an acre of Enlist beans in here, so he didn't really want to go out and buy a chemical um, for that. Now, here we are standing where I've got three modes of action, a 3.5 and a 15, and it's pretty clean. And the, and the 2.4-D and the Liberty cleaned up all the escapes for the most part, and I'm very well pleased with it. So I think we can do things with multiple modes of action. It just gets expensive, and it may be a lot cheaper to do something with a, a two-shot application of the 2,4-D and the Liberty. We get back over here and we've got two modes of action again. You can see stuff sticking up. So that hasn't worked as well as some other things have. Now, you know, there's two or three things I've noticed. The beans over here to the side go in the other direction. Those are all conventionals or Roundup Readies. I think I call those conventionals most of the time now. When we sprayed the 2,4-D, we had absolutely no drift that I could detect. And I'm, I'm well pleased with that because in our part of the country, we've got lots of, lots of houses, lots of small fields. We've got grapes, we've got vegetable growers, and uh, we can't have something that moves too awful much. So the, the Enlist One product stayed put very well, well pleased with that aspect. And I think you'll see some growers move that direction, um, especially in these tobacco areas and grape areas and things like that, because we can keep it in place, it appears to much better. Um, all in all, this field is way, way better than it was last year. My grower just purchased this field this year. It, it, somebody else had owned it in the last couple years. That, you know, there had been nothing done for Palmer pigweed, and it was full of stuff that was head high at the end of last growing season. So it, it may not be perfect this year, but it's a, a far cry better than what it was. And I think the Enlist system is going to be something that we can use in our part of the country. And I think we can expect good weed control out of it as well.